Hey guys, welcome. Welcome to the stream. How are you? How are you keeping? Just getting all settled for you here. How are you getting on? We're going to uh, keep going with this. <coughs> with this guy from the last stream. A bunch of you wanted to know about how I merged everything together. So we're going to step into that on this stream and maybe finish him off. Fingers crossed, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, depends on how much yapping that I do. But uh, I'll take a handy for a minute and just let, let a couple of people join in. Um, Hey Luigi, good voice brother, yeah so, <clears throat> we'll hopefully get to, to wrap this guy up and we can keep moving with him, I, I was thinking during the week, or last week, because I never finished, there was uh, the Hellboy that I never finished, that I should really get back onto. I did that Wonder Woman. I started it. Some people wanted to see that. Uh, and the reason I actually stopped the Wonder Woman is like because I was thinking I have to stop. I have to stop changing all the time and actually. Because if I was doing the longer streams, I'd probably have more time and I'd, I'd have time. If I was doing like a four hour stream, for example, I'd have time to finish things. Like two hours isn't really enough time to finish anything you know, relatively complex. So I think if I, I at least need to stay consistent and continue things so you guys can actually see me finish them because I keep swapping and changing. Because by the time I come back, I'm kind of like, ah, that was all right, but I want to do something different. But that's me indulging. Where I should really be, uh, should really uh, keep going so you guys can all see what the finished product looks like and follow it all the way through. Because you know, some of you guys as well use them like tutorials, which is really cool. But obviously, you can't use it as a tutorial if you don't see how it finishes. <clears throat> but these, where is the. Uh, oh, got this. So I can show you all these heads again. Um, so this is from here we go. Um, Frank Guarini. I hope I'm not ruining his name there. But um, he did these sketches, and I just thought they were really cool, really dynamic and tricky to sculpt uh, we started with this one as you can see and they're really they're complex there's a lot of shapes going on they're really dynamic and they're not exactly well they're quite uh, asymmetrical <clears throat> which is always a bit of a challenge so uh I thought these would be fun to do because at least you guys can see me tackle something that's kind of, you know, relatively tricky. If, like, for example, in a lot of uh, work that I do in, in a studio, like, it's rarely ever as complex as this. So if you can do this and you can do it well, you can, you can most certainly do a lot of the work that you'd get in a studio. Um. So okay, so yeah, we're gonna continue finish this guy. It'd be cool to do all of these in the streams, go through them all and do like a a full set of the heads. Be a cool little thing to have. So, uh, we don't need you. So you can see we have it up here anyway. And the new, I've been <coughs> using this UI I set it up before the last stream 
just so you guys can see the brush up here in the corner. So I've been using it ever since to try to get used to it. It's weird changing UI when you're so you've been using one for like you know a couple of years maybe. I've been using the previous one for like two years or something. So switching it up is like you know you, you know everything inside out and then you change everything and you can't find the simplest of things. So I've been using it since to try and get more used to it. So I'm not looking for things during the stream and all that. Because that's not a good use of uh, everyone's time. So, okay. Uh, hey, Yulia. I'm not doing too bad. How are you? I'm having... Um, I finished the sculpt... I finished the sculpt there oh, near, about two weeks ago of the Mr. Freeze that I did and I like textured it and everything and um, that was a, that was a fairly long that was a fairly lengthy one so I've been having some downtime and it's strange because I don't know if I'm enjoying it or not it's weird when you're used to just working all the time it's kind of hard to enjoy the downtime uh, some people call that a bad work-life balance. But it's not even... Like, I still work, as in the studio work. But, like, you get to a point where you kind of get so used to doing your own personal work all the time. It can be a bit of pressure, too, that you kind of put on yourself. Because, you know, you want to be posting stuff on a fairly regular basis on, like, social media and stuff. If you want to, like, build up a following. Because that's just what the algorithm likes, is when you get interaction regularly. So that's uh, that adds to the pressure a little bit, but I think more just, I'm so used to always having something to work on. And I thought, no, I'm going to have a, a little bit of downtime. And um, it's kind of difficult to enjoy it. Kind of difficult not to have that kind of feeling of guilt that you're not working on something. Um, I've heard Mr. Freeze turned out. Oh, looking forward to my vacation. Yeah, nice. And thanks, Julia. Uh, glad you liked it. Um, looking forward to your vacation. Where are you going? I just came back from... Uh, I was in Donegal recently, and uh, which is a place up the north side of Ireland and it's absolutely stunning I had to swim into a cave on the side of the beach I had to swim around some cliffs and into a cave and it opened up into like a, a, it, it opened up where the, the, like there was no roof if you like and from the edge a big waterfall was falling down you could walk you could like swim up and then walk up out of the water and walk uh, in and under the the waterfall was so cool um, one of the most one of the nicest places I've ever been in any country and all these years I'd never been to it and it was like a four hour drive from where I live so I'm very glad I got to see that now that was really cool um, Um, okay uh, Sniper 2020 cool name um, right before uh, hey Zetia and True Coast White Tips how are you um, so Sniper's asking I uh, hope, hope you well that is a while I have confused about 2D concept artist and 3D concept artist. Is job of 3D concept artist making a 3D version of 2D concept? If not, why most of concepts in art books are 2D? Well, because they're two different. Yeah, they are two different uh, things. So, no, uh, a, tr a 3D concept artist would not do, would not work off of a 2D concept. So, 
Okay, so concept art is <clears throat> essentially like the concept. So it's the idea. It's the initial idea. Uh, what, what the majority of the time, what happens is the concept is done in 2D. And that's because 2D by, by nature is quicker to complete. <clears throat> so you, you get a 2D concept. And once that's finished, in fact, you'll even then get a breakout depending on what it is or and sometimes the studio you'll get like a breakout which will uh, take out certain assets of the concept if it's like an environment and give you a turnaround so that the modeler can have a has a, a full um, appreciation of how the uh, whatever say it's a I don't know a tower or a, a lighthouse or something um, will will get a turnaround of that broken out from the concept so that it, that the design is completely fleshed out and torn so that the modeler knows exactly what to make uh, and then sometimes but much more rarely um, a 3D artist will be asked to do the concept or a 3D concept artist will be asked to create the concept in 3D and just go straight and, and skip the 2D step altogether um, that just happens way less that's why um, you see like when you buy like a concept art book or whatever it's usually always uh, 2D but even now <clears throat> a lot of 2D concept artists will use say if they're doing environments and stuff will use 3d to make a scene in 3d they'll even light it and often even put textures in and everything so they have like the majority of a fully built 3d set but it's it'll be it'll be very mucky and thrown together it won't be you know the way a, a proper technically modeled set would be for you know a, an animation or game it'll be very thrown together um and they'll light it and stuff and then they'll take the render <clears throat> and paint on top so it's becoming the two things are kind of gelling more and more as time goes on um mahmoud hello from egypt cool man welcome um javed khan hello how are you um and Yulia, um, I'm going to the seaside, very nice. For next year, Ireland is on my bucket list. Sounds amazing. Yeah, you should talk, yeah. <clears throat> uh, that'll be great. You should absolutely see uh, see Ireland. Um, the West Coast is a, what's called, if you, if you look up the Wild Atlantic Way, um, You can't go too far wrong along that the west coast uh, uh, the west coast <clears throat> the drive from the top to the bottom of the west coast of ireland is called the wild atlantic way now you probably depend on how long you you were coming to ireland you're probably not going to do the whole thing uh, although you could it's like ireland's a very small country but uh it's a uh, yeah it's it's just uh, there's beautiful beaches and all that type of stuff if you get the sun that's the trick though we don't always get a lot of sun but even if you don't there's just a lot of beautiful places in Ireland I think it's worth a trip Um. it's not always given it's due diligence it is a it's a Especially, I, I noticed uh, <clears throat> from work, a lot of people from other countries, especially uh, I worked with a lot of Italians, and they love Ireland. They think it's beautiful, which is, you know, you can trust that a little bit more because obviously as an Irish person, you've got some bias. But uh, yeah. All right. I want to get this nose welded together first. Yeah, we've got a few in now. Should be good. Red. Yeah, that's fine. So these three. Yep. And yep. Dynamesh. No. Dynamesh a bit higher. Dynamesh a bit higher than 
that. Yeah. And now we'll hide everything. Duplicate it and Z remesh that low. Sorry, no, I'm to keep this. Yeah, that's fine. No problem, sniper. The Babu, welcome back, man. What's your preference for retopology other than quad draw? Um, I don't know. To be honest, that's a, a difficult question. I I really like well, I like using quad draw. Uh so I that's the, generally what I default to um, what else would I use yeah I pretty much use because like I mean retopology it's not like the, the edge flow is the difficult part the tools are fairly straightforward so it's not something that I get too caught up on like what can do it best I mean, Quadra does more than a good enough job, so. Um, and that's my, like, in, in my job, my main two tools are, well, my main tool is obviously ZBrush, and then after that, it's Maya, so. Um, I'll generally kind of prep it for the technical pass in my because that's like the pipeline so I stick with that there's not a lot of incentive <clears throat> there's not a lot of incentive to to move away from it for like topology reasons you know Um. And a lot of stuff <clears throat> I'll actually make, you know, especially on like the clothing and stuff. A lot of that stuff um, I can actually box model essentially in ZBrush and I'll do that as well. So I get a lot of that from s straight out ZBrush ready to go. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, car drives driving me nuts. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I can only t like what I if I was trying to look like with anything. If I'm trying to look for another tool to use, you know, the simplest answer is just do some research. Google it and go from there, you know. That will generally get you. Uh, you know, I mean, there's ways to do retopology in ZBrush too. With polygroups and so on, there's, there's add-ons and stuff as well. So there's options there too. That uh, I know a lot of people are quite fond of, so... You could look that up. There is a topology brush. Although <clears throat> the topology brush is what I'd usually use for like making a base or making like the base of like eyebrows or a pocket or you know that kind of stuff. Um but obviously when you're talking about retopology you're talking about like making uh production ready models. Um, which is kind of not the not the purpose of zebra, so it's not kind of tailored for it necessarily. But it has got options. It's kind of the same way. I mean, ZBrush isn't a texturing software, but Polypaint is actually really really good. Um. You know, I'll use substance for texturing, but I'll often start my texturing process still in ZBrush. 
so I'm getting a lot a lot of the final product straight out of ZBrush even though it's not necessary it wasn't designed like ZBrush wasn't designed as a program initially for that purpose which is a uh, it says a lot about ZBrush I guess Yeah, yeah, the the yeah snapping and and drawing out the topology in ZBrush is definitely an option as well. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> um, Mama was asking which programs I need with ZBrush to work with production agency. Um, it. It, it depends it depends on the studio uh, different studios it depends on what part of the industry you, you want to work in like whether it's games or uh, animation uh, like like I said I use ZBrush most and then I use Maya um, after that and that's really all I need to know I say all I need to know there's a lot involved in those two programs in ZBrush and Maya. Um that's the crux of it so Maya is one thing you could do a lot of people talk about Blender but not I don't know any studios that use it I mean I know some studios that have licenses but they don't use it in their pipeline which is not the same. Have you yet to see any studio that uses anything but ZBrush for character sculpting? to move those over <clears throat> I'm just going to brew force this over it's going to be a real like works from this angle for the most part which I don't usually do because I'm so used to working like in production friendly things although I never do I never do proper retopology in my own characters because I do it all the time in work so I just don't do that part it just it adds so much time to it and like I'm not gonna animate it so once the topology is good enough for UVs it's good enough for me this might be able to get some of these spots yeah. so I'm just like <clears throat> it's changing the focal point so it's quite tight on the move brush I'm just using alt to pull it straight off the normal you see and get the spots skew slightly let's get to this nose Hey Christian. I 
I have no experience with Cinema 4D, sorry, uh, Mohammed, but I'm wouldn't necessarily. I I would I would try Maya because it's more of a pipeline tool. If you're thinking about what you'd use in a studio, Cinema 4D is not gonna do you much good. I wouldn't think. Uh, in terms of like, especially if you're doing characters, uh, I, I'm not sure what you would do. And you need something that. Um, you're gonna have to work in what the studio render in and and rig in and all those things and they're not gonna do all those things in Cinema 4D not nothing against Cinema 4D just that's not what that's for cheers Christian I don't know if you're talking about my actual ZBrush or the Sculpt, but whatever it is, appreciate it, buddy. Uh, let's do those little spots up here as well. This could do it more length. What is it? What are you? What are you guys sculpting at the moment? Sculpting anything cool? Let me know in the chat. I don't know what to sculpt yet. I'm debating on doing some my own superhero designs just random ones for the fun of it do a series of them for funsies Swan Coffee House is sculpting a head. That's always a good start. Um, fair play. Any particular head or just like a studying anatomy type of thing? And uh, the Babu is sculpting Nathan, the main guy from. That's a lot. Use your brain. Metalocalypse. Metalocalypse. That was actually really hard to I could I could read it, but saying it I have to go with that man. Metalocalypse Animated series. I have not seen this. Oh yeah. Big broody guy. Yeah, that's cool. Stick this over here. Shouldn't be sculpting that close. Silly. Throw some X Gen on them, stuff nice. I haven't used X Gen, I use our Natrix, uh, which is fun. 
I haven't tried next gen. I must give it a shot at some stage. Still in the learning process, so just studying anatomy at the moment. Fair play. That's exactly the type of thing that you should be doing when you're learning. Although, I heard something today in a YouTube video. I do watch, like, sometimes I do watch, uh, you know, take a look at, like, particular YouTube tutorials or something, see what they're saying. Uh, I won't say who, but a popular YouTuber um, was talking about anatomy and how it's not really something that you must learn. Uh, that if you want to do stylized, you should just learn stylized. And if you want to learn realistic, you should learn realistic in this kind of thing. And uh, I couldn't disagree more not disagree more um, so I think you're doing exactly the right thing you should be learning even if it's stylized that you want to get into you should you should know anatomy because otherwise you won't know when you're breaking the sculpt or you might sense that you're breaking the sculpt but you won't know why and you won't be able to make your own stylized decisions you'll only be able to make decisions that you've seen other people make because you'll have no like when you stylize a face or an arm even you have to be aware of what the anatomy is there in order to stylize it you can't just make up random shapes because it won't be an arm or it will look like a broken arm or you know it won't look correct even in really it, like that's so yeah anyway uh yeah so that that one because it was a pretty popular well relatively um youtuber who was saying it and i just could not agree more and i'd say to me he just misled a lot of people um and the more I thought about it, the more I was like, I did, I, 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 I still disagree. But it's, I think essentially he was just overstating a point of, like, if you want to sculpt, just sculpt. Was kind of what was being said. Um, and I think the point was really more that. If you are learning to sculpt, sculpt what you like to sculpt and just keep doing that until you get better. Which is, there's definitely some merit to that. Because you don't want to be studying so much that you're not enjoying it. And then you give up. Because if you give up, you'll never get good. Um, so there's definitely a time for anatomy practice and there's a time to just sculpt and enjoy it. And you need to get, the, you need to get that balance right. And that's down to you, you can't, not, there's no like, do two hours of this and one hour of that or anything, that, it's completely down to you and your own proclivities. So, yeah, I would say, I would say everyone should be studying anatomy. Another point that was made was, uh, people online say oh no you have to know anatomy and he picked up on that as like nobody knows anatomy um, like it was a ridiculous statement but nobody at the same time I don't think anyone who says you need to know anatomy means you need to know all uh, everything there is to know about anatomy uh, because nobody knows that so it's kind of goes without saying so it seems like be a bit ridiculous if everyone had to follow up you have to know anatomy with but by that i mean not all anatomy just some of it or as much as you can of it and you should always be learning like you're not going to do that everyone knows what someone means but you need to know anatomy um 
like I don't know everything about anatomy but I know enough to you know uh, make a, at least a, a decently informed decision and the more you know the more of an informed decision you can make like it's not it, it was described as a tool but it's not a tool it's a fundamental as it's widely known so um yeah good fair play swan keep at it uh, one of the things people keep saying you need to know the rules before breaking them exactly i've said that myself yes very very true and that's what stylized is it's breaking the rules which is i think harder i think harder you know if you can just copy straight from life then it's right there your reference you're just copying the reference or mixing up some references together where if you have to stylize okay if you need to work off a concept and it's a relatively straightforward concept then at a certain level of once you get to a certain level of like your eye is at a decent enough level your ability in zbrush is at a decent level you can probably do that anyway you can probably do that uh, but if you have to make any design decisions or if you have to design in 3d um as uh sniper 2020 was asking earlier um or if you have to oftentimes it's happened to me tons of times where i'll get a concept but it's only one side or it's really rough or it's only one side and it's really rough and i have to come up with everything else uh in which case i i need to know how to i need to i need to be able to i need to have a decent eye for design to do something at least at least appealing enough um because if i can't do anything if i can't work with that at all then you know okay you have an art director but the art director is going to have a really hard time trying to pull something appealing out of you and that's not what you want for a junior, you can. That's okay. You know what I mean. Uh, juniors, it's a different thing. But once you're past the junior, you don't want. It shouldn't be hard work to get a decent character out of you. Generally speaking, something that can happen sometimes actually that anyone who isn't in a studio should be aware of. And I've experienced it too. It's not like only, you know, artists that aren't that good or, you know, doesn't, it's nothing like that. It's, it can happen to any artist. If your, like, sensibilities as an artist are very different to your art director, um, that can cause, I wouldn't say problems, but, it, you, but kind of problems because you're going, to, you're going to be reacting to things very differently than your art director. So you and your art director are going to be interpreting things and 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 um wanting certain different kinds of shapes and styles or whatever and that that can mean it doesn't matter how good you are you can struggle to get to you know to resolve the 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 sculpt the way both of you are happy well usually you'll just have to just stop thinking and just listen and just try to um mimic what you think they want as best as you possibly can which is difficult can be very difficult and sometimes it's maybe not appreciated how difficult that can be For an artist to sculpt in a way that they don't really like or maybe not like but you know what i mean um, okay ah oh, hey shane shane alton's in everybody a man who needs no introduction but i'll give him one anyway shane's one of the 
one of the other Pixel Logic streamers, but he also is the the man behind the, the 3D character workshop, the man behind teaching an entire generation of sculptors. And an absolute gent. How are you, Shane? How are you keeping? Love this guy. Yeah, this was... This was uh, Frank... Frank Guarini. Hold on, I'll throw, I'll throw his name in the chat here. Maybe you'll know him already. He's uh, he's really good. He does really cool concepts. Um, there's His name is in the chat for anyone who wants to look. Um, and he did all these really, really funky, really dynamic heads. It's like a, we were talking about... So on on for for Shane's school, the 3D character workshop, uh, we did a little thing with a uh, scruffy shenanigans with some of scruffy shenanigans work, and we discussed like the intricacy essentially of of sculpting something that graphic and you know, uh, well yeah, something that graphic is the best way to put it really, I guess. Um, and this guy I think is a similar. case where the shapes are so obscure that that adds a, like the where, like for example you we all have foreheads but does this guy mm, i'm not so sure or he does but it goes straight down the back of his head so uh you know you kind of have to really use your imagination to figure it out it's not just uh this is where so we were talking earlier about uh, the importance of learning anatomy and that is still stand by that um, but then your shape language and your shape language comes heavily into it then where you, you know the shape itself your shape design and it defies the logic of the anatomy entirely so you just have to you have to work with it but your anatomy is still going to come in there to make sure that you don't make choices that make it look completely broken too um cheers shane yeah this one's a tough one i picked them because they're tough but yeah you know when you do that and you're like oh yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna get stuck into this and then you're like an hour into you're like man this is tricky <laughs> You're like struggling to get something working. But there's a lesson to be learned in that too. The perseverance of a character sculptor. Because uh, I don't think there's any... There's no such thing as a... Sometimes there's like a facade, you know, to like professional artists. Or you see artists on like the likes of like Pixlogic Live and all that kind of thing. And you're like, oh, they never make mistakes and they know how to do everything and stuff and it, there's no such thing as an artist who just knows how to do absolutely like knows exactly how to approach everything straight out of the bat it's just not how it is there's always trial and error involved and sure the more experienced you are the quicker you can get to the solution but uh, there's always trial and error involved and a battle with like trying to get something to just work well like you can see here so Obviously, we're working, mate. We're working really from this angle, but like when I turn them straight, I mean, what I'm trying to do, because I'm, I'm, as as we all are, I'm aware that this guy is very uh, asymmetrical. Like it kind of looks like his nose tilts toward camera, for example. So if I was doing this for production, maybe I'd, you know, you'd have to work that out and try to neutralize those things more. Where in this case we're just doing it for like a render, so I want to I want to catch those things a bit, but I also would like to be able to do more than one render or more than one one angle when I do a render. So I'm kind of allowing for the fact it's like a you know like Leica's work, uh like the kind of puppets that are like super uh, asymmetrical and wonky and really quirky shapes. So I'm just diving into that and allowing that to just be part and parcel of the the look. But in order to do that, I have to really like 
accept that and dive into it because if I half and half it won't work if I like half get it working from this angle but half try to keep things neutral it'll, it'll probably just suffer from from trying to do that so better to just go hard or go home as they say um oh hired gun is saying i love zbrush and the space mouse together yeah i've been looking at the space mouse i'm supposed to get one at some stage so hopefully i'll get that at some stage soon because i'd really like to try that the the guys from space mouse were in touch with me i'd like to try it out looks really interesting uh so the babu yeah you're saying that's what i'm learning with my current scope to stylize it on my own based on what i know so far it's good exercise it is yeah yeah if that's what you want to do uh yeah you get good at whatever you do whatever you practice you know uh that's why I generally always do my own concepts. There's definitely better concept artists out there, but I want to get better at that, so that's why I keep doing it. And uh, sometimes it works out well. Um, every character, okay. Uh, every character has to go through the valley of the suck, as Ryan Kingsland says. It's so true. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love that. I love that phrase. Uh, I was actually only watching Ryan Kingsland recently. I hadn't seen him in so long. Um, such a cool. I love his voice. But uh, yeah, the value of the suck. I remember that even in college. That's how long ago. Uh, Ryan Kingsland's like the... He's like the last boss of sculpting. If sculpting was a game. <laughs> uh, he's really cool. And yeah, that's very, very true. Um, we need to dynamesh this guy together I think now so um, something that I say sometimes like the, like exactly what you're saying Shane with the, the value of the suck is you kind of need to when you're, when you're doing a character sculpt you kind of need to use your imagination as to where it's going because sometimes what can happen, what can happen especially, like I remember doing it when I started and I feel like it's one of the really common tropes of like a, a, a beginner in ZBrush or sculpting in general is really early on they're like, oh, it doesn't look good. So they make choices at an early stage to make what they have now look good rather than continuing on the path to the actual intention before they started. If that makes sense, that might be like you you want to get you want to get the sculpt here. Okay? But you start out here and instead of continuing to this point, because it doesn't look here, you start veering off. Just because you're trying to make this look good. But it it's okay that it doesn't. Like as exactly as Shane said, as he's quoting Ryan Kingsland, the the man himself, um you have to go through the valley of the suck where it sucks that's okay um and that's the challenge yeah exactly and i always get i will always be kind of like at this stage for example like this this points where i'm like oh yeah like there's a little exciting points you know where you're like okay it's starting to come together and you can really see it's starting to like you can see where the final result will be but you're always kind of using your imagination to to see where it's going to be I was thinking about where it's going to be and not where it's at right now. Is it well? That's essentially how I would think about it generally. Um, and that seems to help. All right, let's get some of these parts together. Do these have? That's dynamic, so we don't want that. We need subdivisions. This is why I don't always use dynamic subdivision because I know I'm gonna weld it together at some stage but it depends on what it is if i know i'm going to be editing it back and forth like the eyelids for example then there's no harm depends on the piece it's really just like 
I know a lot of you have asked me before, like, do you use dynamic subdivision? And the answer is yes, I do use it. But I think it's more about understanding, knowing, okay, I know what dynamic subdivision does and I know what I need. So do I need it right now? Like, is there a reason for me to use it right now? You know what I mean? It's usually just, because it's just a tool. So it's not like, I never use subdivisions, I just use dynamic subdivision or anything like that, which I think from a beginner's point of view can be confusing. Um, but it, it, it's really just as you learn the tools and how they work in your own pipeline, your own like process of sculpting, it'll it'll make more sense. You'll use, you'll just, you, you know, as you would with tools in a shed, you'll use it, you'll be like, oh, I need a spanner. It's essentially the same, uh, same, principle um oh hopper sean's in hey sean how are you keeping brother uh perseverance is definitely a massive thing the amount of time it takes to get out of the valley of the suck sometimes takes yeah sometimes it takes a very long time that, that is very very true and it can be like disheartening if you're trying to get through the sculpt but uh it, yeah as you said sean it's just perseverance because you'll get it there eventually you know and there is a time you know if you're just doing personal work i'm talking about here obviously if you're in a studio you have to finish it but um you know if you're doing something that's just it's it's just frustrating you frustrating you it's okay sometimes as well you should be precious about it don't be precious about sculpt but be precious about pushing yourself um so if it's just frustrating you like move on because you can move on and park it off for a bit that can be the right thing to do sometimes you need to call that yourself um because if you get really really frustrated and you just walk away from it and now your last memory of sculpting two days later you're like oh sculpting the last thing you, you did when you sculpt was just sit there and just bash your head against the wall then you may not want it'll be hard to get motivated to do it again so sometimes just go back to your comfort zone for a minute that's what your comfort zone is for go back to your comfort zone for a minute sculpt something you you feel more comfortable with and then come back to it wait and, and let that let that bring your confidence back up and then you can go back to it um and i'm absolutely guilty of doing that where i've just gone ah, i'm not really enjoying this or it's not looking the way i want and then i just abandon ship that's why if i i i've mentioned it a bunch of times with other artists and it seems every artist has a graveyard of sculpts that they never finished because they just not even like it was too hard it was just they just lost interest in the sculpt and i've some of them some of those that i lost interest in and then after a bit I came back to it and like the 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 gangster uh roddy which if any is have seen my portfolio I'm sure at least some of you have i hope um i'll throw it here if you so you can have a look if you want um roddy the gangster he's like side he's pointing sideways with a gun that was I worked on that for about a month and then I abandoned it. I just threw it away. And it was actually a friend of mine, Rory Bjorkman, who you might know as well. He's an amazing uh, artist, 3D artist. Um, he was like, you have to finish that. You've got it so far, you have to finish it. It looks really cool. And I was like, ah, does it though? Blah, blah, blah. And he, he made me go back to it. And luckily he did, because it's actually one of my most, like of all the pieces in my, um, I, I I was happy with how it turned out. I was really happy with how it turned out. And I enjoyed making it in the end. And it also turned out to be one of the more popular um, of my sculpts. So it was a win-win. So I was really glad in the end that I went back to it. And it, it very, very nearly was never seen, never seen the light of day, so. It's always good to keep them there. Let's get this fella put together. Where's his ear nubbin? 
Is not what we call the shine. I always mess that up. I feel like I'm saying it wrong again. Just because I have done. Is it right, isn't it? Air nubbin. Um. Oh, cool. Cheers, Shane. Thanks for dropping in, man. Chat to you later. Air nubbin. <laughs> um. So the babu makes me upset how clean your sculpts are. I think a lot of great shapes and form. Thanks, man. Well, it, it's a lot to do with the process. Keeping things separate and keeping, always having um, subdivision groups. Oh, I need to, it's not what we want there. See, that was dynamically subdivision, subdivided, see, dynamic. So it looked so divided, but it wasn't. So when I merged it into this, it didn't have, it turned back into its low poly self. So we just need to actually add some subdivisions to it. And now we're away. We'll add a subdivision to this just because I can see a little bit of tessellation. What a word. Oh, look on this one too. Is that multiple polys? No. Or I should say multi poly groups. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Okay. So we're just merging. Don't need that. Where are the eyes? Actually, it's the only other part I don't need to. Just put that up there and then just merge down. Down, 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 deep down. Boom. Alright. Now, I don't want to see anything else. And now I'm going to do mesh this with a high resolution. And that way we can keep our angles and smooth out the ones we don't want. We can keep our sharp edges and keep and then get rid of the ones we don't want. Um Jeffrey, thanks a lot, brother. Appreciate it. Um Love the Robbie Banks, the one with the video that was about blend shapes. Uh what happened to that character? Yeah, that's a sad story. Poor old Robbie Banks. So that was going to be the gangster character I was talking about earlier. That was gonna be like his 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 brother. I had like a narrative in my head where like uh, the the Roddy was like a detective, like a private eye, and Robbie Banks was like a well, he robbed banks, um, and he, I I had him probably like eighty percent of the way sculpted, give or take, and I got a new computer, and I swapped out the hard drives. And I thought I had transferred over everything. And I gave my old computer to a friend of mine who wiped them, who reformatted the, the, the hard drives and, and wiped everything on them. And I realized that there was a bunch of ZBrush files and a bunch of other stuff, renders and stuff, uh, Maya files, whatever, on that hard drive and they're just gone. So poor old Robbie Banks. He was not even in the graveyard. He's he's in he's in he's in he's in the abyss. He's just gone. It was so it was heartbreaking. There was a there was a bunch of he's not the only one. There was a bunch of others that I just can't. I'll never see again, and will never will never sh deserved to be finished, and they'll, they'll never be done. So that was really sad. But it happens. Okay, so. You can see what I've done here. I know some of these are familiar because I've shown this before, but uh, people, a lot of people still ask, so it could be just confusing or haven't seen it yet. So just quickly, I've merged all, you see me there, I just merged down. So everything on the highest subdivision, I merged each sub tool into each other. So now all of this is in one sub tool. And then I've just dynamesh them together, simple. Just dynamesh them. And I, and I brought the resolution up a bit just to keep it from obviously I don't want it, the resolution to kill it and kill all the shapes and all that uh, so now that it's all dynamesh together I can just duplicate it so now we've got two 
I can even just go back to this one because this one has the history on it. So, you know, no harm. And now I'm going to Z remesh it. So I'm going to check. This is going to be too low to keep this detail. So I don't need super low, but it'd be nice to have a few subdivision levels. And that's the point here, right? So now I've got, so I've got this Dynamesh. Now let's Z remesh. And uh, I'll show you then what happens when that's done. Um, and Sarah is saying, finish not perfect. Helps me a lot as an artist too. Yeah, that's very true. Finish not perfect is a really, uh, is a really common one for a lot of artists. I, I've heard that a bunch of times uh, over the years working in the industry, like uh, even within like a production, because obviously with productions, you've got schedules and uh, they're tied to the to the the money so you know you you have to try and keep at least within the schedule um it's harder as as you're saying sarah i guess you're saying it helps you a lot as an artist when you're doing personal work it can be difficult to tell yourself it's finished because uh with artwork of any sort you can always add a thing or take away a thing or you know and I think um, where I decide, where I try to decide, all right, it's finished as opposed to not, as opposed to perfect um, is where I had an idea for something, whatever, whatever the initial, say it was the gangster thing or the detective. Does it look like a detective? Yes. Is it appealing? Yes. Is it, a, and then there's like a, is it as appealing as I as I set the bar to be in my head? I'm like, not quite. All right, I'll work a little bit more on it. And once it's right, I know it looks like a detective from other from another person's point of view, which is important. Um, that it reads to the viewer as it as as what it's supposed to be. So in this case, a detective. And they're not going to look at it and go, "Is he a plumber?" You know, they know what he is and what his purpose is and everything about it sells that so the 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 pose the silhouette the the forms give away like the type of character he might be um the clothing so the, the actual design in, in like the clothing the costume design um all of those things all sell what he is and who he is so you've heard of, for example, a villain will be more angular. Um, a, a, a kind of brutish character will have like a kind of square shape to their to their body because they're sturdy. Um, a more lovable character, and you think of, and I think it's probably a lot to do with like our own. Well, no, I don't think it is. It is uh, a lot to do with just you're you're essentially manipulating people's senses because when we see round things we think okay that's that's like a comfortable thing to hold it's not it's not threatening where something sharp like a knife is threatening so we we take those sensitivities that humans have and we put them into characters that's what that's a big part of shape design in stylized work um so all of those things should be implemented in order to tell the narrative of the character that you're making. Even though you're not putting them in an animation or anything like that, but they should, it should, the character should read as who they are and what they are. So when I'm happy that it's doing that, and then it's just in, care, in terms of like the appeal or like how... what level of detail I want um, and, and I'll have set that bar before I started with like a nice you know a, a mood board or whatever getting some reference together and figure out okay what do I want to do and once once I've ticked those boxes which is does the visual language do its job yes have I reached the detail and appeal that I set out to yes then I'm done just to elaborate on what what I would describe as how I 
say I'm finished rather than it's perfect because you can always go you know that brown could be you know I could lean a little bit more to the red side of that brown maybe that would be better or lean a bit more green or you know what I mean you can always do those things and you can do them and do them and do them forever so at some stage there's no there is no perfect it's a, it's a pipe dream it's just something you'll, you'll chase forever um, so very good uh, points there that was a good one to bring up um, let me see okay so now now we have our our dynameshed head everything together in one sub tool and dynameshed and now we have a duplicate of that that's been z remeshed so now this will act as my low my lowest subdivision and the reason I want to do this is so that I can still hit smooth and do something like this where you can see there so if I if I smooth this how uh, how much that affects it if I go to this and do the same thing I'm just like I'm just softening some edges here the shape isn't changing at all so that's why we want to have those subdivisions back that's why I do that so now I'm just gonna go up one subdivision level and project so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm subdividing and then I have a shortcut key for the project which is here now you have two options with project all it wasn't always this way it used to be just project a subdivision level at a time but um, now it's project all which means you can hit subdivide five times and then ZRush will go through each subdivision and project each subdivision to the other mesh uh, which is super handy sometimes though if you don't do it on each one if you don't do it at least on the first two uh, because of the lower resolution and it, it's it's like th there's the original sculpt surface and and now the the new one after the after the z remesh is off it when you try to project it, it can't the distance is too big and it won't find it so it helps to just project like subdivide once project subdivide again project and then maybe you can sub then you can maybe subdivide like three times and project from there now that the shape is closer so that can happen sometimes and that can be a bit annoying um john uh don't let perfect be the enemy of good we're getting very philosophical tonight i'm loving it that is yeah that's another great one that's we have like at least five t-shirts i feel like we could make tonight um i'm loving it um no problem sir no problem um Okay, Space Cookie is asking, do you mind if I ask, uh, how long have you been doing sculpting? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I think... Well, okay, so I started clay sculpting. Um, let me think. Like... Maybe like 12 years ago was when I kind of got into this clay sculpting and um but at the time I wasn't like full clay sculpting I was mostly drawing and painting and then but I got into clay sculpting as well and um then I got into zbrush I guess I got into zbrush I'd say about 8 years ago Yeah, yeah, no, well, yeah, no, about eight years ago was the first time I, I started playing with ZBrush. So a long old time now. Okay, so now we have, go up here, this head is, you know, you can see no subdivision levels. So this was just our high res mesh to bake off of, or not to bake off of, sorry, to uh, project off of. So we don't need that anymore because we've projected the detail. And now we have the whole uh, mesh with multiple subdivisions that we can smooth. 
and our highest subdivision there intact and ready to go. So now, now we can start sculpting into this as all one piece. Um, someone's looking for Jeanette. <laughs> New line of embroidery pillows. What? Oh, yeah, with the thing. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, Ebra sculpts. I'm rendering a marmoset with substance textures, but not getting the quality in 4K resolution. Should I export raw or 16 bit from substance in some way? Uh, is there. I feel like there's got to be like a substance stream for that question because i don't i use substance a bit i don't use marmoset and this is definitely a zbrush stream at least i hope it is <laughs> and yeah 12 years uh did the clay sculpting give you a good start do you feel or do you find it maybe got a little in the way no i, I think it helped um i think it helped but I think actually the drawing is what helped most because I remember maybe uh, I was less than a year using ZBrush when I got my first job and like the, in the industry and that was that job was sculpting characters in ZBrush and um, you know after less than a year in and I got a job some people were like wow that's really fast well done you must have like must be just naturally really good at sculpting um and i definitely think i i took more naturally to sculpting than i do to drawing painting or painting uh but i think uh the drawing helped the most i think that was what translated the most uh like at the moment i'm looking to see if i can find a nice uh, uh 2d course to do because uh, I still feel like if I improve my 2D my 3D improves because like I know how to use ZBrush and yeah for sure there's there's some buttons and you know little things in ZBrush that I maybe don't I don't use so I don't know so well and that's fine but like I know ZBrush well uh, I know how to make uh, you know I know how to sculpt a character I know how to do the technical sides of a character for my job and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so what I want to learn is more, is to, to get even better at like uh, shape design and uh, you know how, how shapes flow and more about, maybe learn more tricks about how to uh, get across clever ways to get across the narrative of your character within the sh by using the shapes the shape language um, and uh, you know how to balance detail and how to balance uh, you know hard versus soft on a sculpt and what works well what complements what those kind of things and I find um, it's kind of harder to, to find answers to those problems when you do like 3d courses and stuff now that said i haven't done a lot of 3d courses honestly um but uh in my limited experience uh, i find that the 2d courses tend to answer those questions in, mu in in much more depth than in 3d because i feel like of course in 3d not everyone's looking to find those not not everyone's asking those questions in 3D, where in 2D, everyone's asking those questions. Um, but in 3D, a lot, most sculptors sculpt off of people's, other people's 2D. They don't do their own concepts and they uh, certainly don't do that in work. Where I do it in work and I do it even more so in my own personal work. Uh, so, uh, that's important and even when I'm working off another sculpt or, or sorry another person's 2d uh, be it personal or in work um, 
the nature of having to translate a concept from 2D to 3D, you're gonna have to make some decisions in terms of the shapes because everything isn't solved for you in the 2D. So if you know, uh, if you're good with shape design and so on, then you can make good decisions and finish out and refine that character, flesh out that character at a much higher standard than someone who doesn't understand it. And I, I know I've seen it plenty of times and, and it's fine, it's actually pretty common practice where it's sculptors who just they 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 have a good eye as in they have a good eye for detail and they have a good eye for like um what's the word i'm looking for um a good perception i feel like that's not the right word but anyway um they're good at 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 uh taking what's in front of them and being able to duplicate it essentially in 3D. Um, but if there's a, an unsolved, if there's a, is a, an unresolved question that the 2D leaves them, then they will send it back to 2D. They'll, they'll go to production and say, hi, I need to get to the, the 2D artist needs to give me uh, turn around of this piece or blah 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 so that they can figure it out and and sometimes that's absolutely necessary regardless because maybe it's a story point and maybe it needs to be ran by the art director and blah 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 and you don't you can't assume to just make it up yourself uh without saying anything to anyone so sometimes that's completely necessary and sometimes it's not so necessary but if you don't have those skills then you're gonna have it is necessary you're gonna have to do that because uh, you don't have the the knowledge to to design something yourself um, and it could be something very simple it can just be what does the head look like from the side profile depending on what you're working on sometimes you won't even get that and I, I've done that's happened to me plenty plenty of times and I'm perfectly fine with that by the way it's not something that bothers me I prefer it in fact because I get to I get to put my stamp on it then and make my own decisions rather than being tied to someone else's artistic sensitivities you know that sounds really pompous artistic sensitivities um, but you know what I mean you know what I'm saying so here I'm just you can see I'm like popping up and down the subdivisions to like just loosen out a couple of these because uh, you can see at the you see this kind of stuff at the highest subdivision that are left from where two things uh, the two meshes met each other so i'm just smoothing that back a little bit to get it more like this and that's going to work then from you know you're actually looking at the character rather than you know you see up here it's like this jaggy where this has you can there's a nice highlight that's catching inside and everything that's what you're kind of looking for super tight like razor tight edges don't work very well and that's actually a good thing to keep in mind when you're sculpting um, or box modeling in fact uh, it was something that uh, a good friend of mine taught me very early on when I started uh, working in the industry um, Giacomo his name is over from Italy and a very 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 talented modeler and he really knows his stuff he said to me one day I can't remember what I was making but I had something beveled like super super tight so just the edge was like razor sharp on it and it was you know it was something like glass or something like broken glass or something along those lines that you you know you, naturally you think well the edge of this has to be like very sharp and uh, <clears throat> he came over and he was like look and he showed me um, an example of where that was done on a model and rendered and you couldn't see the highlights on any of the edges and it made it look really really cg and then showed me something that was the the bevels were loosened slightly so that the 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 render engine when the light hit it um you didn't get well you don't get aliasing so you don't get those you don't get um there's enough room there that the highlight isn't just the odd pixel in which case you get this jaggy not 
appealing messy stuff along the line instead of a nice uh, highlight along the edge so um, it's something that you should always be aware of and always be always like zoom out because sometimes you know you're, you're you're adding a bevel at this distance and it looks like the bevel is not too bad but when you when you zoom out that bevel is like you can't even see it it's so tight so you have to be cautious of that because it'll ruin your render and it'd be a real shame because you could be really good like your shapes and everything could be really good but if you kill um if you kill the lighting with like super tight bevels and and things like that you'll actually destroy the whole thing because um if you if you do a bad character but light it well it will probably still look pretty good uh if you do a great character and light it badly it's gonna look bad there's no it's gonna look bad like for sure bad light lighting changes you ever see those uh things it's like a like uh i don't know what they're called it's like a dome of lights and cameras they use them for like uh, scanning people's faces for games and all that kind of thing i don't know what it's called necessarily but sometimes they show you and and it's the the face straight on and the light just circles around them and how much the face changes depending on the angle of the light like sometimes like when the lights over here it looks like a different person compared to when the light was hitting them from this side um like lighting uh, hugely 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 affects everything like it's one of the most important things that's why lighters get paid very well because if they do a bad job your your, your production is gonna not go too well so that's why and that's why a lot of people now ask me to do like a rendering tutorial which is really funny to me because i never i was never a lighter i was never i just when i started in zbrush I, like again i used to paint so that helped but uh when i started using zbrush i just rendered it i, I didn't know even how to use the settings to get a nice render in zbrush so i was doing these really honky renders and posting them on ArtStation back when I had like, you know, when I was starting, I don't know, probably like 30 followers or something on, on ArtStation. So, I mean, no one was seeing it anyway, so it was all good. But, um, you know, it's, uh, I remember uh, Brice, uh, Brice Lavelle St. Martin, he's, a, he's another sculptor, he uh, works on like Clash Clans and stuff. I assume if you're watching me, then a bunch of you is known because he does um, stylized sculpting as well, and he's he's incredible at it. And uh, he started in the company that I was working in, and uh, one day, one day I think we were in the cafeteria, and he just asked, "Oh." show me your portfolio show me what you what you do and so i showed him and he was like oh this is cool this is nice uh, you should learn to render and i'm like what do you mean i'm a modeler and uh he was like no, no you really you, you should really really learn how to render this it's like it's really important i'm like is it and he showed me render man and um i've rendered everything i've ever done ever since because like I said, the lighting matters so much. So when I work really hard on a sculpt in ZBrush, then you know I want it to look its best. And uh, he showed me how to use Render Man, and then now I I, I since learned uh, Arnold, and that's that's what I know best. So that's what I use because that's what I can execute the best lighting with. So, but uh, I know a lot of people use uh, ZBrush for their renders as well and do amazing renders and all other sorts of render engines uh, it's it's more just the principle of lighting that you need to know and uh, you know it's very important to present once you're finished the sculpt you're not done uh, you've now got to present it like 
like I'm all for it. You should enjoy the process and stuff. But if uh, you know you're gonna make some art, there's a good chance at some stage you're gonna want to show somebody. Oh, I just realized it's really dark. Can you guys see me? Huh. Sorry, I'm hitting the mic there. Where do you render your stuff, Paul? Uh, in Arnold. Arnold render. It's my thing. Uh, but yeah, it's always really funny that people ask me to show them how to render because it was never something that, you know, I just. I never got like. Not that I, I love doing that stage, like I love rendering it and everything, but uh, it's not. Just, I don't know, it just kind of surprised me when people were like, can you show me how to do it? Like, I never considered myself, like. You know, especially good at it until people started saying stuff like that like can you show me how you do it or whatever I was like, oh. but like that said it's kind of I have I've been rendering now years but what I do is actually very straightforward like rendering doesn't have to be this is why I mean there's not really any excuse not to render your stuff because it's it's not something that's going to take you three months to learn like you can learn it pretty well no i take that back actually like if you don't know like if in terms of arnold or something like that you, you know if you don't know maya or max or whatever you're using that in then obviously yeah that, that that's going to be a bigger learning curve but even then you can but then again like uh, when you render something in in ZBrush, you can actually get really nice renders in ZBrush, like straight out of ZBrush. I mean, but a lot of people that use ZBrush to render will render passes, which is super handy. That ZBrush will give you all the passes straight away, and um, in here you'll get all the, the different passes that you need, and you can layer them in Photoshop and, and flesh it out there. But you know, if you've never painted anything in Photoshop, then so there is a learning curve in fairness so I, I, I should take that back that's not fair but um, it's definitely something you should try to learn to do and there's plenty of videos and tutorials on YouTube and all that kind of stuff too so there's no reason not to it's fun too I mean a lot you know you're really into sculpting and that's great but there's you know doing some lighting and stuff like that is also fun change things up a little bit from time to time can be nice what time is it actually ah yeah Um, uh, Jeffrey's. Oh uh, wait, sorry, me for right now. Um, Jeffrey Paul, I love the Mister Freeze model you did. Um, thank you very much. Question: What is your favorite Pixar film? Uh, that's tricky. My favorite Pixar film. Hmm. Do you know, I always, find, like, for example, the first 15 minutes of Wally -E are incredible. The first 15 minutes of Up are incredible. Now, it's not to say the whole film, in both cases, are extremely well done. Uh, because, you know, it's Pixar, they don't do any, they, they've never done something They've never made anything below excellence. Uh, that's why they are where they are. But um, like in terms of my favorite content from Pixar, 
I love the first 15 minutes of Wally, specifically the first 15 minutes and the first 15 minutes of Up, to me are just stunning little stories. Um, and then, you know, after that it becomes grander and everything, and that's fine, and that's enjoyable too, but for me, I, I'm, I, I like those tight little, you know, like watching um, watching them grow up and go through life, and then there's like the whole, I guess they have a miscarriage, and you know, all that, and it's like, oh, it's sad, and then it's, there's little funny bits and little happy bits, you're just watching this old couple, and then she dies, and that's heartbreaking, and watching this old man now who just lives on his own, and you know you can see you can kind of put yourself in that a little bit and it's you know pulls in the heartstrings and it hits you i think it hits you a lot more than like a robot going on a spaceship for example uh or going to like finding this like fantastical bird and a talking dog and you know what i mean um which is, I know, a big part of that is because, you know, of course, it's also made for, for kids. Uh, if it was only made for adults, maybe it would be more of that first 15 minutes, which is, uh, you know, makes sense. But, um, and then, yeah, the same with Wally, like, this little lonely robot uh, finds a, is, like, trying to court this, the first thing it's seen in god knows how long um and even like which is hammered home by the fact that in certain parts you can see like the same type of robot as him like broken and rusted scattered throughout the world so you can see like it's like the visuals immediately hammer in like he's completely alone and has been for a very very long time and then this other character shows up and he's completely besotted by her and again it's like it's kind of sad it's kind of tragic but funny but like and then uh, i can't remember the song that he plays for it's, which is beautiful and then obviously the actual visuals are stunning as well and you know they're always at the top of the, like, the technology and stuff um and just little really heartfelt scenes like when he tries to get his hand in under her or he puts the umbrella over all those kind of things it's just you know I, I feel like as an artist if I was sitting there and I thought of that I'd be <laughs> I'd be so chuffed with myself Um, so it's the appreciation as well of the idea of like someone thought of this so that that, that does a lot for me uh, I always feel almost like there's a part of me when I watch a film like that and scenes like that where I'm almost happy watching it. I'm almost enjoying it f on behalf of the artist who made it as opposed to actually just enjoying the scene itself. Um, that and uh, Pixar's shorts, I think, are great. Um, I always think back to the one of the... the guy who was asleep in his house and the aliens the tr trainee alien trying to pull him out the window and keeps uh, <laughs> sending him into the wall and oh that was for me just cracked me up it was so good um, so there's a full film I'm really struggling to decide what would be my favourite Pixar film I mean I like a lot of them um, I definitely like like for example, and I, this is not a knock to Pixar either because I know that they didn't make it for me. But like Cars, I find less interesting. But to me, when Pixar made Cars, it was much the intention was much more towards children than children and adults. Like if you take Cars versus like. You know, let's say that like infamous scene in Toy Story Three where they're all about to die and they all just look at each other and hold hands like that's not made for a three year old. That scene was not created for a three year old. To be like, oh, the, some little 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 Sandy will love this. Like, no, it's completely completely in there just for the parents. It was intentionally so that you know, and and there's same with up. 
you know, a, a, a little kid isn't going to know the, what a, a, a miscarriage is. Or, or be able to understand the kind of pain that someone would go through in a time like that, you know. Or the history, like that whole thing is like displaying the history that he had with his wife that he grew up with from a child. Uh, like if a five-year-old is not going to understand how that works. They're not even capable of, you know, having that kind of feeling yet, so... Um, yeah there's a, a really long winded way to answer that quick and easy question um, onward is good uh, they could have made the first 15 minutes of up as a short animation it would have been perfect oh yeah absolutely that yeah the, like for me that and Wally could have been like the first 15 minutes are like how you make a film that's is like a template for like how to make a film how to make a great film uh probably actually even i i think even if i had to pick of the two i'd actually go with wally uh, just because it has no dialogue or anything and stuff like just the you know the the it's all about subtleties and stuff and and body language in a in a box with a box with you know what i mean so um it always would be much better result to render oh wait it always would be much better result to render in Maya or Max it's just so much more space for creativity in terms of light and materials you can't even put a plane of light or something in ZBrush well see if you want it to come if you want the render to be the end result like whatever comes out of the render to be the end result then yes that's true but that's not really what that's not really the point when it comes to zbrush well yeah okay yeah like in terms of like setting up lights and all but like you can only ask so much it is a sculpting software um but like considering it is the viewport looks fantastic and the renders considering are really nice like the lighting there is you know th there's nice ambient occlusion uh, ambient occlusion happening and uh you know you can change the angle of the light and so on and there's other tricks you can do in there and the point is then that you will be able to get these passes and then if you want you can go in and like flip that light And get that pass so you like for a rim light or whatever and you can bring all that into zebra or sorry into into photoshop where you arguably have much more creativity and room for changing things because you can literally paint it in and you've got all the passes to help you to do that so i wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily knock it knock zebrush for that because it's just not what it's trying to do you know what i mean um, but like you know, using render engines in in Maya and stuff are are great. So, but you you kind of have to always consider like what is the tool trying to do, because you can't just go. It's kind of like I don't like hammers because I can't cycle them. So yeah, well, <laughs> I know that's a really silly and extreme example, but you know you know what I'm trying to say. It's like uh if it's not trying to do that, you can't knock it for not doing it. Especially when it, you know, it's already doing things that really it has no right to be doing. Like, you can, you can, you can do nice texturing in ZBrush. Like, there's plenty of texture software, but you can't, do the sculpting that you can do in ZBrush or anything even remotely in that ballpark so um, that's something I mean, that I always kind of admired about it it's just how uh, 
kind of versatile it is for something that was just made to be like essentially initially i suppose a, a sculpting a sculpting simulator a digital sculpting an answer to sculpting in digital the same way like i mean photoshop wasn't even necessarily made for digital painting it was made for photo editing Um, but then you have like procreate and stuff so there's a there's an answer to painting digitally and zbrush pixelogic came with an answer to painting or to sculpting digitally and then added in painting anyway which is insane <laughs> and i always love i always loved painting um in zbrush but I, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm as good at that. Like, there's some people who are just really, really good at that. I'm using poly paint, like, straight in here. Like, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm okay, but... Something like that. That would be something else that I'd love to upscale in. You know, there's always... I always like to... Span out a little bit, you know what I mean? And not just only sculpt, but be able to do other things too. So learning learning a bit more about colour will be really helpful. And I can come in and, and, and adapt that when I'm using poly paint to paint the characters. Um Paul DC, how is he? Uh, he is well. He is very good. How is ha huh? single horse? Wow, what a name! Go you. Uh, what spec computer are you using, Paul? Okay, quite a high spec computer, but just to be clear to anyone, because that can frighten some people, that's not required for what I'm doing right now. I have that for all sorts of stuff. Uh, and you know um, also during the lockdown I wasn't spending any money and I was able to save up quite a bit and I thought it was a good investment so um, so I'm using a thirty eighty. Um I'm using a tread whip a tread ripper 3090 3990x which is quite a high end processor that's like 60 it's a 64 core processor which I think is the only oh no up until recently was the only 64 core tread ripper I think uh, I think they brought out a newer one now that's even more ridiculously but that's really good for Arnold especially um because i don't do gpu rendering generally um not for doing single frames so the cpu really strong cpu comes in handy i can like get through renders really well um what are you i can't even remember all the ram what is it a hundred and Twenty eight gigs of RAM. Um Oh no, I stopped the music. Uh yeah. I closed the tab and stopped the music. So it, it's a high it is a high end computer. That costs quite quite a lot of money. But the computer I had before just because I needed to update so badly. Um and the last computer I had was really like bottom of the barrel. Like it was so, so old. And I was still able to use like a, a large amount of the 
uh, work in my portfolio was done on that so it's absolutely not necessary but a new workstation a good workstation like i would say i'm, ta I'm talking euros now here so whatever your conversion is um f for doing 3d you know if all you're going to do is zbrush then probably less but like zbrush is a lot less taxing on your computer but if you have if you spend two to three thousand which i know is a lot but like for a professional workstation i'm talking here then that's a professional workstation that's a that's a good a solid professional workstation you can absolutely get away with spending a lot lot less less than that especially if you're starting out with zbrush or anything that's not i'm just talking about like a professional standard rig um so for me like i went a bit over the top on on mine i spent a, a substantial bit more than that uh, but i just wanted something that you know is is well uh, just a really really good machine that i can throw anything at and it doesn't care and i can just you know do whatever i want and it's just like yeah i can handle it so that's why i bought that one uh, what was he doing here? Now, where were we on lo-fi lo-fi station can you guys hear the music yeah and finish the fitty cat finish the fitty can't say that name <laughs> uh, we also splurged over lockdown yeah I mean yeah why not if you've got if you've got some disposable income I mean you work for it you may as well spend it I always say there's no reason to be the richest man in the graveyard no for you though oh that's very loud that is also quite depressing not depressing enough um you can't hear music yeah well no you wouldn't there a minute ago but now or have you heard it all because i've been playing like stream friendly music um how much did i spend on it uh, i spent a lot like a silly amount a silly amount right and i need to make that clear because i really am like i, I know i'll say it and i'll say it again and still someone will be like oh god i can't afford that you don't need to i just need to hammer that home you do not need to but i spent about seven and a half thousand which in euro um so but like i said i had savings i had all that kind of stuff tucked away and I knew I was going to be working from home for a long time so I was like I want to just get a lovely rig that I can do all my work and I can do my personal work this is getting a bit loud uh, and yeah so that's why I did and I, and I love it it's great lights up does all the, the fancy kill stuff that you want your super rig to do so yeah <laughs> there goes my inheritance. Um, yeah, I've got a MacBook. Like a good friend of mine, Rory, and again, most of his portfolio was done on a MacBook, and he's like a superstar artist. You know what I mean? He's got like I don't even know what he's on now. It's probably over twenty thousand followers, and you know what I mean. Not to say that that's that defines his art, but you know what I mean. If you've got twenty thousand followers, you're doing something good. So he's he's and he's he's doing like really high end stuff and you know for a long time he did it on a MacBook, so it can be done. There's no need to be breaking the bank. What time is it? Um.
yeah, you don't really need a lot for ZBrush for sand. You don't really need a lot for ZBrush. I think a lot of people are still working professionally on seven plus year old PCs. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, ZBrush is not not really taxing on your on your machine. So if you need like a super high end PC, it isn't because of ZBrush. ZBrush is uh, very friendly. in terms of uh, computing power. Right, where are we at this? I wanna change that material, it's a bit funky. Trying to make sure to get a nice curve that works with the shape. And this, this again is like even my uh, talking earlier about how drawing helped. Like even my life drawing comes in kind of here because I'm, I'm I'm drawing from my shoulder not from my wrist which if you've never done life drawing or anything you won't do that I'll draw from your and I'm, I'm drawing increases here and I want I want control so I need to draw I want control over the angle of the line and the, the curvature so you have to draw from your shoulder to do that. That's the type of thing you draw, you learn in like a drawing class or whatever, rather than like I can't imagine there's a lot of three D courses out there telling people to draw from their shoulder, you know? Not to knock three D courses of course. But just that there's you know there's some merit to, to 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 2d in terms of what it can get you in 3d so just because it's easier on my arm i'm gonna do this part upside down You see, now that everything's put together, I can start adding in these kind of details. And this is where, it's this kind of detail that can only be added at this stage. If you try to add this stuff in earlier, it'll only complicate things, or often just complicate things. You can afford a little bit, but if you start doing that everywhere, it's just gonna make life harder for you. So here, you see the way this line here? So what I wanna do is what I wanna, well, what I don't wanna do, let's say first, is to follow that line exactly and the same thickness all the way up and make this like the same thickness all the way up. 
what tends to be better and a slight bit more dynamic and more organic is that it tapers in slightly you see so that's what i'm aiming for but i want a nice quick stroke i don't want to be i don't want to be doing this and i never use lazy mouse says him look it's on but you know what i mean i don't use the steps or whatever to like slowly i can just kind of stop it from i'll often take the same approach as i would when I, if i was drawing it And pretty low, and Damien Stanley always keep quite low because I want a nice, I want a nice little pinch, and the Damien Standard actually pinches slightly as it digs. So if you have it on a lower sensitivity and you go over it, you tend to get a nicer valley rather than if you have a high, if you have a high to try get the final result in one stroke. You see, it does this kind of thing. Does like, I'll draw on the side of his face. Does like this instead, which is not what I want. I'm just making sure that I'm keeping to the flow of the original forms, like the primary forms and secondary forms. Just trying to think about like fleshy kind of wrinkles. Standard to get a shape there. So I'm, right now it's just all I'm using is Damien Standard and the Smooth, and I'm just trying to get. Some creases. I'm trying to decide where I want creases and where I want smooth areas. That's it. Going in and doing them, but always like backing, backing out, and making sure that I'm not overdoing anything. Very important. Keeping an eye on the whole, the thing as a whole. I should really. <clears throat> See, like I'm just I'm using the alt smooth, so I'm pressing shift, got putting the pen down and then lifting shift 
to all smooth it. Which averages out the surface rather than polishes it. Drop a subdivision level or two. Using all smooth again just to get the the surface nice and even without destroying the core of it. Normal smooth will, tell, will tend to flatten the surface rather than average it back out, which is what you want. You want it to average back out, not to flatten. And the reason you want it to average back out instead of flatten is because... See, see there's a bump there? Now, on an actual shader it depends, but see the way there's a bump there? And I can see it because of how the light is how the light is reacting to a bump that's there so like if you've got a bump your your light will show it you have to try to keep that to a minimum where you can so this is causing that problem this here i can see it because it's pulling right there see it there so I'm trying to draw across this stretched, these couple of stretched faces, which I generally doesn't like. So the solution to that, which I won't do right now, because you've seen me do it a bunch of times and it's just a waste of your time, but will be to duplicate this again and Z-remesh it again and get something that doesn't have that across uh, an edge like that. Boys and girls, I'm actually roasting. It's very warm. Um, what have I missed here? I don't know. Didn't know you were listening to music until you said. Yeah, I had to turn it back on because I closed it. So I probably had it too low earlier. Um, I'm trying to bake the high poly to low poly but when I try in substance painter I'm getting so weird geometry almost like stretching around the ears and the advice. Make sure that your low topology isn't too low, that the shape is close to the same. If it's too low, it can't, the surfaces will be too far away from each other. That can cause that. Um, but it's still nice to hear your machine gasp. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like you don't need to super GPU with ZBrush. Yeah, yeah, it's handy. It's always been a plus point because I developed a fetish for touchscreen laptops early on. Oh, excuse me. Um, it's good to know I just became interested in ZBrush, but I have a Surface Pro 4. Yeah, yeah, you don't need much. ZBrush is very friendly in terms of that, so. Regardless of what you're running, you should be more than fine. Are you on a screen display? Yeah, I'm on a, a Wacom Cintiq 22 HD. Uh, I actually bought the new one and sold it because uh, I prefer this one. Uh, the the newer one with the stuff on the sides, I just don't like it. It's just this is just a screen, and that's it. That's a nice size. So Wacom 22 HD. I think this cost me like I seen it a while ago, not that long ago, and it'd be less now. Actually, I say long. Ago a while ago uh, I think it was like a Black, F Black F Friday sale like two years ago probably now that I think about it because I think it was before lockdown just before lockdown and it was like 700 euro uh, which is very reasonable well relatively speaking at least um, and you don't want carpal tunnel no no that's very true Um so you do so do you hold it like a regular pen or use the drumstick grip i wish wacom had a bigger variety of pens for that the drumstick grip what the like that that's a drumstick grip like that's how i hold a drumstick surely you can't <laughs> I, yeah i hold it like a normal pen that's yeah like that just like a normal pen um, I 
oh, if it helps, it's freezing in New Zealand. So it's all averages out, I think. Yeah, I think that just means we're both suffering. Um, it should be freezing here, you would think. Like Ireland, it's kind of like renowned for being cold and rainy. It's not as bad as everyone makes it out. It's actually just, I'd say Ireland is just more, more than anything, it's just mild all the time. Well, then again, it depends. If you're from like Brazil, where it's like scorching hot all the time, then you'll probably think it's really cold here. I don't know. I remember being in Portugal on what I thought was a scorcher of a day in me shorts and a light t-shirt thinking oh lovely I get a nice tan today and I went out and all the locals were in like long trousers and like jumpers and stuff I was like what is happening like if I put if I had it done if I was wearing what they were wearing I would have fell to the ground and died it was that hot well to me Climatize and all that stuff. Oh yeah, here. Oh, I get this in. Are we after ten? Yeah. So again, even now I'm thinking of like, all right, at this stage, sculpt is nearly done. Add in some more wrinkly stuff. Do you know what I forgot actually? Do I have this? I do. So I always do this. Uh, the camera, I put it on 85 millimeter. Sometimes you can even go higher. Characters, especially portraits, tend to be a little bit better with, with a higher millimeter camera. So it's essentially flatter as opposed to lower millimeter, like a 35 millimeter, uh, will give much more, almost like a fish eye lens effect when you are when you do like a portrait. Yeah, it reminds me of like, from like, a, was that, you know, the Trolls film that Laika did? What was that called again? They lived in bins and stuff. for all of us um, ah box trolls that's the one yeah it reminds me of something from like box trolls What do you think? Any any questions? Because we're we're gonna have to wrap it up soon on the sculpt, preferably. <laughs> oh no, no, any questions? Whatever. Uh, what pen tablet are you using? I'm using the uh, Wacom Cintiq 
HD. It's a pretty old one. But it's, I think, my favourite one. Um, what was the question there? I see it's freezing in Austria. Um, hot single horse. What a great name. Just a high five to you. Um, <laughs> uh, sort of like between. Wait, where am I? Okay, sort of like between the forefinger and middle finger and thumb, like you do with charcoal or pencils. Oh, but. But charcoal, yeah, well, now that you say that, with like charcoal or anything like that, like if I was doing life drawing. Yeah, I th oh yeah, okay, yeah, kind of this kind of thing. No, God, no, no, I couldn't. I don't I don't think I've even ever seen anyone use a whack on like that. Do you know someone who does that? That'd be weird. Oh, well, weird. I would find that weird to see. I'd be like, whoa. Um, perfectly attractive character. Oh, I thank you. Um, let me see. Seems like the music just got good as we were, like the last two. I'm liking that. I feel. Can you see, Can you actually hear that? Or why is I'm like just like why is he why is he joy like that? It's because he's a bad weirdo. <laughs> Only people who pronounce it, way calm, hold it like a drumstick. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What what Mick said. That is. Wacom and ZBrush. Blah. It'll never be okay. Um. See, this is the other thing here. I'd have to flatten that perspective even more to see enough of that eye without like really skewing that. It's a lot. That's not bad. So again, see, this is why having that lower subdivision. If I had just a Dynamesh, I wouldn't be able to do this. Moving all this stuff around with like these lumps and bumps and crap everywhere. And I just look. It would be it would be bad for business. Wouldn't do anyone any favors. Now I remember why I pushed that in because from the front it's so wonky looking. It's mad looking. It looks like a chair. But I I, I'm, I'm, I dig it though. I like that he looks like a chair. Not uh, so. Where any uh, do you use layers? Not, uh, no, not really. Sometimes, if I think of it, it's I don't. I, I'll use it when I'm uh, working on blend shapes. I'll bring I'll bring meshes in and use the layers for blend shapes. But um, I know like a really common thing is like turning on a layer and then doing details and then you can like you know scroll in and out to like deepen it or, or lessen the, the detail or get rid of it or just see if it's working and all that 
which is a really good idea uh, and I just never I never think of it for some reason I, I have done it though but just not it's not very often that I do that but it's a good idea if if if, if uh, it's a very it's a kind of non-destructive way to work so it is good I would I would say if you if you like doing that absolutely go for it so just building up with the clay build up in here just to kill the edge here so it's, it's a little bit more It's becoming part of the head. I forgot the little bit. He doesn't have a name, we should name him. What is his name? Hmm. Be a good name. That is probably, that, this is actually probably the most extreme Extremely warped character I've ever made. Could be. In terms of like, I basically had to angle, I basically had to sculpt most of it from this angle. Which was a really interesting challenge. Do you know what we can do actually? I keep meaning to make a nice little shader for this. Uh, our material. If we can do that. Um, go to our paint. Hit material. Snap that on there. Go back to our previous one. I don't know, is it like gonna really pick on that? Probably not. Let's see what this looks like. Especially when you're on stream, you're like, please look good, please look good. It's very, uh, it's, uh, the spec can't really catch the eye because of the, the big old brows. Interesting. 
I don't know. We'll just leave it at that. I was gonna do some quick like value painting over the eyes and stuff, see how that looked, but just to get a bit of a a nicer finish. Alright, so what did you guys think of that? Do you want me to keep going with these heads? It's nice to have something that you know can easily come back to each week. I must say. Be a bit more consistent. But I could also there's also Hellboy. To finish up Hellboy. So um whatever you guys think. Um Yes, yeah, very good music by the way. Oh good, you're enjoying it. I have no idea, this is completely random. This is like a random music generator thing for streaming that our boy Coil and Pixelogic gave me. Um It's a garden gnome without its hat, isn't it? Yeah, that could be it. Okay, what's a name? Someone give me a name. Oh, uh Tobe Murray. Tobe Murray. Dr. Tobe Murray Brown. <laughs> yes. I was not expecting something that specific. That's a fantastic name. That is literally what I will call it on Z on on uh, Art Station if I put them on there. So, well done, Space Cookie. You got in there. Well, that was a great answer. Okay, um, and thanks Zete Zete Three D. Um, oh Oscar, you got in. Hot single horse got in there with Oscar. I think does does the bizarreness of Doctor. Tober Murray Brown takes the win there, but I, I see he is an Oscar in fairness hot single horse So I won't knock that I was on your frame of thought I was expecting a name like Oscar, but that just hit me so left field dr. Tob Murray Brown that it's got to be um, uh, I think it's really interesting seeing this, especially since they're so asymmetrical. Yeah, yeah. These are really difficult sculpts, in fairness, uh, to try get something, you know, relatively on point. Do you know what? Pull that shadow down a little bit. Render again. Didn't really help. I was trying to get the black out of it. Um, all right, just making sure I didn't miss any anything good. Uh, it's like seeing someone painting in Photoshop without layers. Only a pro can do that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I never use layers, so I guess I just got used to doing it that way. I, I, I'm very much like just commit to it and move on. Um, I know a lot of people will do that or like keep keep duplicates of their sub tools and all and even in work sometimes with like other artists because I'm I, I my job is a li I'm a lead in, in an animation studio so sometimes I'll need to look at other people's work and like help them out or approve work and stuff and if I see like they've got duplicates and stuff I'm like oh jeez it just drives me up the wall I'm like just commit to this work so just commit to it and they're like nah but what if I never do that, I just toss it, if I'm like, yeah, whatever, and just toss it. Um, so yeah, I just never use layers. And he can always have a middle name. I feel like a middle name is just overkill now at this stage. That is absolutely beautiful, that name. Um, all right. Okay, guys, well, uh, if you enjoyed it, make sure to like, uh, hit that like button, so we know that you enjoyed it. If not, feel free to hit this like, so we know to do uh, a bit better in future and if you if you do enjoy it and you want to see this we've got plenty of other fantastic artists in there as well like shane olsen that was in earlier um amongst many others um and if you're interested in seeing them and more of these videos with me feel free to subscribe you've got that little notification bell if you want to do that too but i don't want to ask too much of you you know so uh, thanks very much for joining guys uh, I'll leave my link tree if I can find it here we go in the old chat there uh, all my social media and stuff is on that if you want to follow any of that if that interests you 
and uh, until next time we might have a very uh, we might have a little special stream coming soon i won't say when yet but it's in the works uh, a special stream uh with another artist coming soon so uh, me and me and another artist coming soon so hopefully we can work that out and uh i'll speak to you guys in two weeks same time two weeks all right guys